Warning, riding a Honda XR650R may cause uncontrollable smiling, excessive wrist strain, uncontrollable urges to defecate in one's own drawers, and a high likelihood of trolling classified ads and spending money you may or may not have to buy one. Other symptoms include a feeling of dissatisfaction with your current motorcycle, kidney sales, and or tired right legs. So, you know when you go out to dinner and you take that first bite of succulent, juicy, perfectly cooked steak, when you say to yourself, why did I waste precious stomach space on salad and rolls when I could have had this? Well, that's how I felt about other dual sports when I first pulled the throttle on the Honda XR650R. Many fans call this bike the BRP, or Big Red Pig. It was an amazing dirt machine, reliable, extremely well built, and simple, like many other dual sport machines. However, it had an aluminum frame and a reported 317 pounds wet weight. It's as light or lighter than a DRZ400 while still being liquid cooled, and some reports list horsepower in the 60s, nearly double that of other big green pigs. So it's powerful, it's got over 11 inches of excellent suspension travel, 12 inches of clearance, and it won many championships, yet it's still inexpensive, costing the same as a KLR or DR or DRZ in many markets, depending on state laws of street legality. So it seems it would be the perfect combination for any dual sport enthusiast. But for some reason it wasn't, and Honda pulled it out of the market in 2007. Maybe because it wasn't street legal from the factory and therefore inaccessible to newer riders that didn't want to monkey around with adding electrical bits or jumping through legalization hoops. It only had a kickstart, which in the era of magical buttons made it seem dated, and while kickstarting it wasn't an issue, the initial thought of cranking over a single piston 650 with your foot seemed medieval. At 2.6 gallons, the gas tank was not even half of a KLR's, which limited the range that adventure riders craved. Without a subframe, luggage options were limited, and it was deemed as less comfortable than similar offerings with less wind protection and at 37 inches too tall for many riders. And looking back to when I was looking to pick up my first dual sport, I remember researching all of these things and being quite turned off to the XR's. The problem with the XR650R is that it lived in a land competing with smaller, lighter, sleeker, dedicated dirt bikes, and at the same time with the dedicated adventure bikes with more comfort and range and luggage options. So it was the proverbial red plastic stepchild. It didn't fit in with the dirt bikes, and it didn't really fit in with the adventure types either. So Honda ditched it. Oddly enough though, Honda stuck with the XR650L. Some people say the L is for lame, and while I disagree, I would say that the L model is certainly not an R, and perhaps even a little more out of place in the dual sport world. The L is heavier, not much more comfortable, it has no wind protection and less power. However, while I like the L, it sticks with the mantra of being boring and reliable, something their car ads actually prided themselves with in 2007. Now whoa, hold on, before hitting the thumbs down button, being a bit boring and reliable is not a bad thing though. Not everybody wants a fire-breathing hyperbike. Some of us like predictable throttle and predictable reliability and predictable performance in a package that doesn't tempt us to ride beyond our limit. The XR650L, while a great machine, reminds me a lot of the KLR650 and perhaps that's what Honda was going for. It's street legal out of the gate, reliable to a fault, simple, accessible, mellow, and inexpensive while still having better suspension and around 30 pounds less weight depending on the report. Yet some of the problems that killed the R remained that kept Honda's L behind the KLR it seemed to be imitating. And that's baffling. Like the small tank, which meant low range and tall seat height and lack of any wind protection. So even though the L survived, it was still stuck between two worlds. When compared to the CRFs, it just doesn't make a very good dirt bike. And compared to many other 650s, it still doesn't make much of an adventure tourer. Even in the dual sport genre, where we can't make up our mind between street and dirt, it is still in limbo. The 650L is a great dual sport, but doesn't have much that really makes it stand out and make you go, whoa. But that's for the 650L review. 
the XR650R does have that whoa, whoa factor. It really is something special and completely breaks the reliable but tame mold. For riders, we like machines that do it all, and we're aware that nothing can do everything perfectly, but we're looking for what does everything well enough. Everything being comfortably cruising at highway speeds for longer tours while still having the ability to rage through whoops without cracking frames. The XR650R can do this, and while I can't say for sure because I only rode it for a short time, it might do it better than any other motorcycle out there. In fact, if I had test ridden all these bikes and done proper research, I may have bought an XR650R instead of a KLR or a DRZ. And for anybody who's followed the Everide Chan Chan for long enough and knows how much I love my KLR and the DRZ, that is a shock. But yes, you heard right. I certainly won't be fire sailing either my KLR or DRZ to get the BRP. But if I went back in time and were looking into the world of inexpensive Japanese dual sports, I would take a much closer look at the XR650R. And I would urge new dual sporters to do the same. Why? Because I've swapped bikes with a lot of friends on a lot of rides, and most times I think, well, this is a pretty good dual sport, but I'm ready to get back to the Black Widow now. However, on the XR650R, I was astonished at how good it was. This bike really is a cut above, and I don't feel that way about many motorcycles. And keep in mind, the XR that I was riding was far from perfect. The owner of it is Marco Odette of Rocky Mountain Adventure Riders and Trailtaker.com. It had stock suspension and around 70,000 miles on it. And it may have felt extra huge to me because of the six gallon tank. And Mark openly admits to neglecting it. A bike that abused and with that many miles and with that much love has no business being as good as this. So it is fantastic in the dirt, but what about that abysmal range and the lamentations of comfort and the hassle of getting it plated and the wind and the highway vibes and all that stuff that scares you and scared me away from the R in the forums. Aside from local laws regarding street legality, most of the big problems with the XR650R are also little problems on the KLR and DRZ and DR and other dual sports. And when I say problems, that's relative. When going from a big powerful adventure tourer or even a cruiser to a dual sport, every dual sport feels uncomfortable and vibey and underpowered and wind blasted when stock. You'll most likely be replacing the mediocre stock bits on all of these bikes with things that suit your style of riding a little better, like aftermarket seats and better windscreens and luggage and larger tanks and different sprockets and better lighting and all that stuff. And if you drop your bike, which you will if you're having fun, you'll be replacing turn signals regularly too. So realistically, if you replace all of these things like most dual sport riders do anyway to just about any dual sport bike, the one thing holding the XR650R back is that cursed kickstart. And while it's not actually that bad to kick over, that right there is what killed the R in my opinion. Aftermarket e-starts for R's are expensive, but if you can find a used XR with a magic button, buy it. I know that's a simple thing that would kill a motorcycle, but think of the demographic that's buying this motorcycle. It's not the dirt bike crowd, it's the slightly older guy who doesn't want to kick over a 650. And moving on, as is becoming a bit of a staple on the Everride channel, here's a poorly executed spur of the moment drag race between the DRZ 400E Black Widow and the review bike in question, all piloted by guys who generally suck at drag racing. And the results might actually surprise you. So we've got a DRZ 400S with uh, Richard on it. And we've got a XR650R with Mark on it. Now these are, this is a fast bike. So my prediction, even though this bike is pretty good, that bike <laughs> is fast. I'm gonna go three, two, one, go, okay? okay. Three, two, one, go!
these results partly surprised me, and they partly didn't. The lower gear DRZ400E was quicker off the line, but overcome by the extra 250 cubes at highway speeds. Both the E and the XR were faster than the S, obviously. But what does that mean? And if I love the XR650R so much now, why am I not ditching the DRZ400E to buy one? Well, beyond the sentimentality, I think it's because they're both excellent. And in my commoner's non-racing doofus on a dual sport opinion, these are very similar bikes. The XR feels heavier, but more planted, even though they're close in weight. They both have a great tractor factor, with the edge going obviously to the XR for basically being able to idle up cliffs. The XR will do better on the highway, but the DRZ400E is nearly as good in just about every way. And it's still in production, and it has an electric start. For gray-haired, out-of-shape dual sport duffers like myself, that button can make the difference between a great ride and a huge pain in the butt, and the thigh, and the calf and foot. Trust me, there is not a lot worse than hearing your friend's bikes fire up with one push of a button while you go through the process of kickstarting, especially in awkward or precarious situations where you're not on flat ground. So, do I like it better than my DRZ400E? No. Do I like it better than my KLR? For highway use, it's close. The XR feels more powerful, but lacks the subframe and gigantic KLR aftermarket for serious touring. But with a few mods, the XR would be great on the road. And for dirt, unequivocally, unquestionably, absolutely yes. So in conclusion, the 650 displacement and usable horsepower in the 50s means it'll cruise on the highway with plenty to spare. The weight, frame, and suspension means it's a pleasure on all but the gnarliest, tightest of trails, and according to many, one of the best machines ever built on wide open dirt. The Honda engineering means that it will last forever, and it's just a fact that on any dual sport bike, you're going to replace a lot of stock stuff with the aftermarket stuff to make the bike better for what you want it to do. Whether that's comfort on the highway or capability in the dirt, you will probably make changes. Just remember that it costs a lot less to make a great off-road bike comfortable and street legal than it does to make a good street legal bike great off-road. The inexpensive dual sport market is filled with great bikes, but if you're looking to buy, absolutely do not overlook the Honda XR650R. For budget conscious riders like me who want the best experience on both pavement and dirt, and if you can get over that kickstart, it may be the best dual sport of them all. And once you have that first bite of the perfect steak, all the other dual sport bikes out there seem like salad. So, dear Honda, please bring back the XR650R in all of its liquid-cooled aluminum-framed monstrous medieval-feeling race-winning glory, but this time add a magic button, a basic street kit, and a bit more aftermarket for comfort, and even a few shortcuts to take all that California law out of it. And while I can't speak for everybody, I know I would sell both kidneys just to get one. So if you like this review and want to see more like it, go ahead and click that subscribe button for free dual sport and adventure videos every single weekend. If you're on Facebook, we post gear reviews, tips, deals, and more. For pictures from around the dual sport community, join me on Instagram. And if you'd like another review video right now, I highly suggest my most recent dual sport deathmatch between the Yamaha WR250R and the Suzuki DRZ400. Thank you guys so much for watching and very much love, Ever Ride Out.